Rob asked at the beginning uh, how our weeks have been. What sort of a week have we had? And I think it's fair to say, isn't it, that sometimes life isn't easy. And there may be times when we find it hard to feel positive. And so this morning, I just want to have a brief look at how the Christian faith, our faith, can help us to keep going. In the book of Acts, there's a story about a ship full of people who are having to say it, to put it mildly, a pretty bad time. This is what happened to them. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings. They found that the water was 120 feet deep. They took more soundings and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing they'd be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. And in an attempt to escape from the ship, some of the sailors, they dropped a lifeboat. But Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and they let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to have something to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you've been in constant suspense. You've gone without food. You've not eaten anything. I urge you now, take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. After he said this, he took some bread. He gave thanks to God in front of them all. And he broke it and he began to eat. They were all encouraged. They ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of them on the ship. Now, when daylight came, they didn't recognise the land, but they could see a bay with a sandy beach where they thought, we'll run the ship aground. But on the way, the ship struck a sandbar and it broke in two. The centurion ordered those who could to jump over the side and swim for the shore. And the rest to get onto planks, any bit of driftwood they could find. In that way, all of them safely reached the shore. History is full of stories about people who refused to give up. In 1914, the explorer Ernest Shackleton led an unsuccessful expedition to cross Antarctica. When his ship, which was aptly named Endurance, became trapped in heavy ice in the Weddell Sea, it became literally an endurance race just to survive. With no means of communicating with the rest of the world, Shackleton and his crew used lifeboats to make the journey to the nearest shore, which was Elephant Island. While most of the crew stayed behind on that island, Shackleton and five of his crewmen spent two weeks traveling 800 miles across the ocean to South Georgia in order to get help for those who were left behind. That failed expedition became a victorious entry in the history books when all of Shackleton's crew, everyone involved, survived, thanks to their courage and their endurance. Now, that story is a great example of what it means to keep going. And in the Bible, there are loads of stories about people who faced all sorts of difficulties. Moses was called by God to lead the people out of Egypt and into the promised land. And yet he would face hostility and threats from Pharaoh and constant whinging and grief from his fellow Israelites. Look at Job and all that he went through. 
suffered the loss of his family, home, possessions and his health. And then what about the future King David? The man described by God as a man after his own heart. And yet he would spend years on the run from King Saul, who simply wanted to kill him. And then, of course, we come to the Apostle Paul. Looking at his life, we see that he really knew what it was like to have tough times. He knew what it meant to keep going. We're told there were numerous times where he found himself thrown in prison. He was whipped five times, beaten with rods three times. He'd been stoned. He'd been shipwrecked three times, including the one that I read about. And in one of those times, he was in the water for a night and a day. And then we also know his life was often at risk, risk from robbers, his fellow Jews, and from the Gentiles. It didn't seem that he had anywhere to go where he could avoid some sort of difficulty, some sort of grief. He knew what it was meant to be cold, hungry, and thirsty. There were times when he went without sleep, and even times when he was naked. And we also know that he suffered with some sort of medical condition that really made his life hard. He described it as a thorn in his flesh. It's fair to say he had to put up with quite a lot. And even that journey that I read about shows how much he had to put up with just for the sake of his faith. He's on that ship because he's bound for Rome where he would face trial because of standing up for Jesus. And if that wasn't bad enough, they find themselves caught up in this dreadful storm for 14 days. And then, you know, nothing like good news, is there? An angel comes along, oh, by the way, the ship's going to sink. I would imagine he probably had enough. But armed with that message of doom, what does he do? He keeps everybody else encouraged. Because God had promised that everyone would survive, even though the ship would be lost. I don't know about you, but sometimes when life goes in the opposite direction to how we might want it to, when disaster strikes, all too often we just want God to there and then fix it, to make things better. But that often isn't the case. But God gives us the means to go on. He can use those times to increase our faith, to help us grow. We only need to look back to this time, the coronavirus pandemic, to see the truth of this. I wasn't here when it began, but I'm pretty sure right at the outset, like many other Christians, the prayer at the start was, God, would you just end this? But he didn't. And it's looking like that was never part of his plan. But at the same time, he answered prayer in many other ways, didn't he? Vaccines were found, they were created within record time. Better treatments have been discovered. And we're in a far better place to deal with the virus now, as it continues to change. It's four years now since that all began. And in all that time, God has remained faithful. He's enabled us to go forward in faith. He's also enabled us to grow. Yeah, throughout it all, we've had to adapt, we've had to change but we've not given up. And I would argue that pretty well across the board, we've risen to the challenge. Paul wrote this to the Romans, suffering produces perseverance. His experiences could have easily caused him to lose heart, but instead the opposite was true. Instead, it seemed to make him even more determined 
It can be the same for us. Life can be hard. It often is hard. We can and do lose heart at times. And especially when we look at all that's going on in our world. But God hasn't changed. And neither have his promises. In Deuteronomy, we are told, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. That promise is repeated in many other ways throughout the Bible. I'm sure they would have been words that would have helped Paul but they can help us as well. When we read those words, the accounts of people like like Paul and others, they encourage us, they call us to keep trusting in God and never more than when times are tough. But we can also use these words, these promises, to encourage others who we know are going through tough times. God can give us the faith to endure. Amen.